G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I've got this little rifle in front of us, uh, one we had here and showed you a little while ago. Um, but we've done our first little shoot with it. Um, basically it's more set up for Sam, but I wanted to go through the bits and pieces, um, tell you the story, a little bit of how, how it all went, um, and also explain what we've actually done to it. Um, I think I showed you previously that I had modified the fore end, or to start off with. It was a Ticker 223 um, in the TAC A1. So it's a little chassis rifle in the Ticker TX3 um, in a 223. And it's really to sort of replace the little Seiko um, 85 that Sam has in the 223, which does a great job, shoots really well, but it's a bit of problems with extraction and feeding and bits and pieces and wanted something that was a little more for the sort of stuff we do. The, that old Seiko 85 is still great, but wanted to have something nice for this. Um, then I also had this, this carbon six carbon barrel here that I wanted to run something that was in six mil and I was going to put it into this combination and what could we do to make all that work. Had some choices, could have gone with a six mil 223 or the various ways of saying that, um, but had access to what I thought was going to be a great little round was this, which is here, which is the six BR, six, B, six mil bench rest. Um, had a little bit of messing around, had to get a different bolt to do that job. Um, and if I was just doing that job, yes, we could have bought the 6.5 Creedmoor or the 308, and that would have been an easier conversion. But we're planning on running this thing in a few different formats, more to come in, in time to come. But at the moment, we're set up in the 6BR, and that's the basic story I got there. So it was going to be a 6BR, and it had this, the, the um, carbon 6 barrel in it, which, as you'll see, is shooting very, very well. Um, and then I wanted to do some other bits and pieces. Wanted to set this up into something that Sam could really use, but I could use also. So to do that, I did the little modifications I need to to put my forend on it. So this is my bipod system, long atlas legs, and the bipod system on the front on the spigot here. And for all the people that ask, did, does it matter when you're attached to the barrel? It's not attached to the barrel. Um, it is attached to the forend. The barrel is free floated, very, very thoroughly free floated, not like normal. It's attached to the forend. One of our muzzle brakes suits our ELR stuff, suits the dry, dusty conditions, but it's also they're not very nice to shoot with. So one of our muzzle brakes, not really needed for the little cartridge, but if we're going to do it, we'll do every bit we need to do. Um, the rest of the rifle, it now has a 308 bolt in it. It also has its 223 still set up, and we'll go back to a 223. I want to do more there with a very much a target barrel for the rifle also. Um, so. It has a couple of bolts to go with it, uh, one with a 308 bolt face and one with a 223 bolt face. There is a little bit extra story to go with the bolt, which I'll get to in a minute, but the rest of it is just setting up. This is one of the little NX8. Um, this is the first focal plane. No, sorry, this one's the second focal plane. Um, NX8 it runs on here in the 4 to 32 magnification, a little 50 mil scope, um, set up on, the, on this um, air attack base which means I set it up to where I get a full 100 minutes of elevation, but that's how I set this thing up to shoot and do all the jobs we wanted to do with it. The only other bit that we had was as much as they have a decent solid um, butt stuck on the back of them, is the, the Ticker Taco one, it's not adjustable in length of pull. I don't really like how the cheek piece works. It was easy enough to clip on one of our universal bag riders on the bottom of it, but there's some bits I wanted to really be able to swap backwards and forwards on this rifle fairly easily. So adjustable length of pull really mattered to get that eye relief to have the eye relief right. So neither of us, neither Sam or me, were going to run in a compromise when shooting on the same day. I had a look at how you could do that. Um, and what I came up with is a product that, well, uh, sorry, a company I work with quite a bit, or I use quite a bit of their equipment, I should say, but MDT. Um, I'll put on list on what this um, butt stock was. Um, it's fairly close to a straight bolt up. Um, not really designed to work this way, but it is working this way and this is how we're using it. I just ground a little bit off the front edge here because it's actually made to go into a different coupling. But because this bit on this rifle is quite long and this is the shortest I could get in an adjust in, in this MDT buttstock, um, which right, this is one of our bag riders it's made for this MTT buttstock. But I, the way I clasped it up was just ground a little bit off and then screwed that thing so it screws straight on there and bolts on the back of it. This ends up with 
just short enough. It's still a tiny bit longer than what the, the um, ticker buck stock was, but j just a tiny bit longer. So Sam could get on and shoot this thing nicely at that length and then easy for me, whoop, wrong button. Um, then I can get on and adjust very simply here where I've got a simple little wheel to be able to wind out there um, to be able to, and this is about where I was uh, another half an inch to go. There we go, that's about where I was shooting the thing. So nice adjustable butt pad, easy to happen, happens very easily I should say. And there's a nicer adjustment for the nice controlled lock up for the cheek rest, um, for your cheek weld side of things. So really worked well. I was very happy with that butt stock and with no more than a little modification here, that all screwed in there. It doesn't have anything other than tension locking it up than a low recoil rifle and doing what we're gonna do. That really, really nicely, so it was a, modification that turned this into a very flexible rifle. And I would come back to nothing really wrong with the ticker one, just the length of pull is not so easy to use and I don't really like the cheek riser, but listen, still would work very fine and no, no issues with accuracy or anything like that. You can see here, Sam shooting, 614 yards, I think was the setup point we had there. Okay, try another one. I think that was on top of it. I okay. was. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one more. I'd say that was three in exactly the same spot. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, that was that Sam shooting there. And you see that, that first group, well, she had one shot um, where everything settled. And then there's three shots in a row uh, that ended up, when I measured it, that was an inch and a quarter at 600 yards. So Sam doing a good job, rifle doing a good job, round doing a good job, all working very well. We then centered it up where it was simply up one MOA. She held the difference over there and we're almost dead center of play. Um, we were doing what we're normally doing. Wanted to stretch it out first as, as rapidly as possible. So straight out to 1150 yards or 1151 yards at that spot. Oops, get this one on. Certainly a different looking landscape with the black in it. Sure is. Yay. And try that. Okay. Let's see, just first one, first dial. Okay, just over the top. Okay. Okay, that looked pretty good, but. Yeah. Come down half a minute. Actually, come down one minute. That's going to be 11 inches. There okay. we go. Try that. Again, three o'clock, four oh. inches from the side of plate. Awesome. Do another <laughs> one exactly the same, see what it does. Let's see, cycling nicely. Yep. Right next to it. Okay. That's like two inches away, two inches okay. further in. Okay, another one, let's see what happens. Okay, that one's over to center. Okay, awesome. Okay, we'll just do follow up last one and just say just do exactly the same thing. Go straight in exactly the same thing, just see where it goes. That's up at two o'clock. Okay. Okay, well that's pretty damn nice, but for its first shots. Awesome. <laughs> okay. 1150 yards. Yeah. Um, awesome. And you can see there, those first two shots are about two inches apart. Um, the, the next two shots were a tiny bit off uh, Still decent group, still was only in the sort of, um, I think about a seven inch group out there in total. But really there was an extra little detail going on with what actually happened. And I'll get to that real soon, but still shot very nicely. 
The next plan was, even though we're doing things very rapidly for a rifle that has just got to like 12 rounds or whatever it is a shot at that stage, um, was to get out to the first place we could. Now you'll see, oh sorry, the longest place we could within reason, really wanted to go out to around a mile um, with 1500 yards a mile sort of thing. But where we had, things have changed. Just actually the day before there was lots of burning. The, the, the um, farmer there, the property owner, were going through and burning all the stubble, ready for seeding coming up, so doing a lot of burning. Um, it meant everything changed massively. And the place where we could put something and still see something and not cause any other, other issues what was going on around the place, um, even though there's no one there on the property, we still had machines and bits and pieces around, was actually at just over 2,000 metres. Um, that was 2,208 yards. So a long way, but still round running, really capable, six mil can go there, but there were some grey areas as to how that was all going to happen. So I went on and did these five shots. Five and see what I can do with five and single feed them. Make sure that worked properly. Yep. Let's just see. Left and low. Put a target left, one target low. Okay. Left and low, and eighth of a target both ways. Just off bottom left corner. Okay. That's not bad. Oh, oh. just underneath. <laughs> just underneath. A little bit more elevation for that. <laughs> yep. Top right corner, just off. Wow. Hit on plate, just the left of centre. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> Yay. Now see we got there, that was very easy to get on, there was thing was shooting really well. I went to do a couple more and we had a couple of little issues. And um, that comes back to that same thing with Sam's earlier group there. Um, the round, 109 mil, um, sorry, 109 grain burger. Um, we're running the 228, so Varget powder. Um, actually, a, a surprisingly good speed for the, the very efficient case. The short and fat side of things, we're running, um, what are we running? The 2,900 feet per second, just over 2,900 feet per second. So very efficient little round for not much powder. I don't get into sharing loads, but you know, around the 30 grains type of thing is what we're talking about. So really good speed for the amount of powder and what these things were designed around. Um, it's a Lapour brass and we have the federal primers in the bottom of it. When I fired them, the, the next shots both looked like this. Now the close up on that is that they popped holes in the, the, where the firing pin had hit the primer. Um, and that meant that they dropped about a metre low. Um, but there's a little tiny bit of smoke came out of the back of the, of the bolt here. You just see a little tiny wisp of smoke. Um, realized something was wrong, it dropped low. The next one did exactly the same thing. I stopped. I didn't want to mess up firing pins and bits and pieces. Wasn't sure what was going on. Still not quite sure on what was going on. I haven't been out and tested it. But in actual fact, we had a look. We had a partial bit of the same thing happening on the second last shot that Sam had on target at the 1150 yards. When I go through and analyze what's going on, there's a little bit of cratering. I think what's actually happening here, and I'm not certain, 
there's no other pressure signs on this whatsoever. There's I generally don't have any issues on the federal primer side of it. I think what happened in my changing over bolts and swapping things around, I've mixed up or I've crossed over the um, firing pins and I'm getting tiny bit too much protrusion of the firing pin which means it's firing it, pushing it in too far, and then when it's being pushed back out with the explosion happening, where you come back to get a normal, fairly normal looking primer mark, I think we're actually overworking the actual primer and that's what's popping, that's why it's popping. So when I swap those pins back around, I think all my problems will be gone, but I haven't gone there yet. There may be something else going on, um, like super efficient, there's, a, there's moderate pressure, although I can, see nothing and feel nothing, it is still up there, so maybe it's pull the pressure back a little bit, paddle back a little bit. I think the firing pin's gonna answer it, but that's why we stopped. I had the plan to go on and get Sam on at ELR, get her out at 2,000 meters, not normally the way we do it. She's a better spotter. I'm better at the holding the mouth at the right angle to get on the plate when you're dealing with wind and conditions like that. But this arrival really set up to go there and the way it was shooting, that was gonna be something that Sam could go on and do and get her own little two or three shots on the plate at 2000 meters. Um, but not to be that day, um, once I had the firing pin issues, it was something I was gonna fix in the field and I didn't wanna end up with carbon everywhere or cause myself other problems. So right there and then we stopped, but I gotta say working really nicely. The one bit you would have seen on there, which I was sort of ready for, I did have to do a fair bit of messing with the magazine. I did up a couple of different magazines. This one here is just a 308 magazine that I've modified. I put a little keeper in the back so the rounds don't go too far back. Um, and that's all I really had to do. Got the lip set to the right place. Um, and this was worth, this is a genuine 308 magazine. And I was actually able to make, make it feed these little fellas um, really nicely. So little bit more awkward to actually put them in, but not too much, doesn't take too much time to get them in there. They, uh, it is a metal magazine, uh, which people like. I sort of prefer plastic ones that don't like scratching the brass. Um, but to me, I'm very fine single feeding, this, but this is the setup so Sam can run the bolt, she stays comfortable, everything works nicely, and I think we're right there. The last bit I'd say is in the way of getting on the target. Yes, you saw the wedge on the front here, 100 minutes of elevation, could have gone there with some holdover, but we got the equipment, it's easy to do. Clipped on that, the 100 minutes on the front, wound up to actually, we dialed on, it actually took 26 and a half minutes. My first dial on was 26 minutes. Um, so yeah, really, really nice. Really happy with it, super efficient little round, great little rifle and the little um, 4AW mods, I suppose you'd say, what we did here, what I do with cards as well, like to tweak them, um, I'm super happy with shooting really nicely. And all up the carbon six barrel, I wanna do some more shooting with it, show it off, see how it actually works, but super consistent, really happy, really nice, works really well, and it turns this, I'll put the weight on here for this rifle, it's still a full tactical sort of weight rifle, but not, not a heavy weight, not by any means, and with such an efficient little low recoil round, awesome to shoot. Anyway guys, that's the little that's the little catch up on this one. I've got to sort out my primer pin um, or firing pin or whatever's going on with those primers and we'll get back out. But still, I'm getting close to the end of our ELR season and we've got this one on steel at 2,000 metres. So, good start. Anyway guys, thanks for checking in. Leave any comments or thoughts below um, and um, we'll catch you next time.